Lecture 2-1, air movement. Wind. Wind is caused by air moving from area of higher air pressure to an area of lower air pressure. Warm air tends to have lower air pressure than cold air. So air can move from cold to warm. It also just moves from high to low. So anywhere we have higher air pressure, air is going to move to lower to even it out. You think about a balloon. Inside the balloon, the air is under a higher pressure than outside the balloon because the balloon is squeezing in on the air. The air wants to leave the balloon because it wants to go towards the area of lower air pressure. So it goes from high inside the balloon to outside low. Now local winds, so caused by high to low, but they're caused by the unequal heating of Earth's surface within a small area which creates a pressure difference. A sea breeze is created during the day because the ground heats up more quickly than the water creating lower pressure over the land and a higher air pressure over the water. So air moves from high to low, from water to land. So if you think about this uh, for a second, here's my land, here's my water. During a sea breeze, the ground heats up more quickly, so it becomes a low air pressure. Water is cooler, so it's a higher, and so we get air moving from high to low. Another way to think about it is the air over the land because it's hotter is rising. So air has to come in to take its place. And that comes from over the water. The opposite, the opposite of a sea breeze is a land breeze. The land breeze created during the night because the ground cools down more quickly than the water, creating a higher air pressure over the land and a lower air pressure over the water. So our water here, which holds on to heat very, very well, will stay warmer than the land. If you've ever gone swimming at night, you've probably noticed this. And that colder air then has the higher air pressure. Warmer air has the low, and we get a high to low. Another way to think about this, just like before, the air over the water is rising because it's warmer. So the cold air from the land replaces it. Another little diagram explaining this. You can see that during the day, it goes from the sea to the land, so we call it a sea breeze. During the night, it goes from land to water, so we call it a land breeze. It's just like any wind is identified by where it's coming from. If I say outside we have a north wind, it's coming from the north. Now there are a couple other local winds. Uh, these are in your textbooks. So if you want to look over them a little bit more, you can. Kennebatic winds are mountains and valleys. Chinook, Santa Ana. Santa Ana happens mostly in Southern California. Desert winds, uh, because the lack of vegetation, oftentimes will pick up a lot of sand and dust, creating what are called haboobs or dust storms. Within the last year, places around Phoenix, Arizona have experienced multiple haboobs. Talking to my friend who lives over there, it'd be like a blizzard here, except it's all sand. Like local winds, global winds are created by the unequal heating of the Earth's surface but over a much larger area. The equator receives more direct sunlight it heats up more than the poles receive light that is spread out over a large area. So we get higher air pressure at the poles because it's colder, lower air pressure at the equator. So here's my earth, here's my equator, and I get the higher pressure here, lower at the center, and so we get a general wind going towards the equator. Now the earth didn't spin, however, the air would blow straight from the poles to the equator, but because the, spin, the earth is constantly spinning, causes the wind to curve because the well technically the air is still moving straight but the land below it is moving so it appears to curve uh, this is called the Coriolis effect in the northern hemisphere instead of going straight down it curves to the left here because the earth is spinning to the right so the air curves to the left this is a bigger diagram explaining the different global wind belts instead of having one constant wind going from north to south we end up getting different areas. This is a much larger diagram explaining the global wind belts. Now, instead of having just air go from the North Pole to the South Pole, we get different areas produced because of the large spaces involved, the different heating, cooling of the areas. We pretty much get three big global wind belts. Up here, we have the polar easterlies. And you can see how they curve a little bit. They curve down into the left. Then we have the prevailing westerlies here in the middle. 
westerlies, which means they come from the west. You can see, like, right here, they go up and to the left, up and to the right, I mean. So they come from the west. And then down here we have the trade winds. And they go down and to the left. So we have our three main areas here. Polar easterlies, down and to the left. Prevailing westerlies, up to the right. Trade winds, down to the left. It's, those are the three global wind belts. And they get flipped over, mirror copies then on southern hemisphere. You get the trade winds, the polar west, or the prevailing westerlies, and then the polar easterlies. Now we also get some areas in between these where there's pretty much no wind flow at all. And we call those kind of the windless regions. The doldrums and the horse latitudes are examples of these. Now wind chill is the apparent temperature felt on exposed skin due to wind. Uh, this is a very real thing. And the whole reason for wind chill is because you cool off by having water evaporate off your skin as the air blows over it. Now if we constantly blow new air over it, it's going to cause you to cool down much more quickly. A fan cools you down in the house. Uh, not by producing cold air, but by just causing more air to move over you. If you actually put a temperature, a thermometer in front of the fan, behind the fan, you'll see it's the same temperature air, uh, but it's because of the movement of air over the skin that causes you to cool down. Uh, this is the wind chill charts uh, designed by the National Weather Service. You probably see this in the superintendent's office or principal's office. In the wintertime, we pay close attention to this because the light blue region, they're still okay. As you get to the darker colors, uh, frostbite happens much, much more quickly in this blue area. Uh, we've had late starts to cold air because of wind chills in this region. So it has to do with the wind speed and the temperature. Higher the wind speed, the colder it feels. Uh, we measure temp uh, wind speed using an anometer, uh, which looks like this. The uh, little, kinda like little cups here that are attached to the center, they cause it to rotate, how quickly it rotates translate the speed. We have one of these on top of our weather station on top of the school and a wind vane measures wind direction. Uh, the main way a wind vane measures wind direction is that it'll have two pieces on it. You know you typically think about the arrow shape that you see on top of a wind vane. Well the back side is typically a larger surface area so wind will push on it harder and so the arrow will always point uh, which way the wind's coming from. So we can tell if it's north wind, south wind. 